Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today, I want to talk about intimacy. Why? Because I've uh, talked to you guys an awful lot about things that allow you the potential to find intimacy, uh, things to maintain levels of intimacy and in kind of romance in a relationship. Um, I've talked about uh, kind of being open and, and the, the personal strength elements involved in relationships and things like this, but I've not specifically kind of narrowed in on possibly the most um, fulfilling and long-term kind of beneficial kind of solid element of relationships and this this can be applied to both um, intimacy in regards to intimate friendships intimate um, kind of working relationships and stuff like that but obviously the place where intimacy is most referred to tends to be in romantic relationships and so that's where I'm going to be focusing much, most of the examples and most of the things that I'm talking about uh, in, in what I'm about to go into because obviously the intimacy in regards to romance tends to be the most rewarding but also the most terrifying in regards to um, kind of acts of intimacy because intimate friends very close friends tend to be that way due to a lot of shared experience a lot of shared time people who are uh, very very close to their co-workers and stuff like that it tends to be as a result of the struggle and as a result you don't have as much time for the you fear of it and you aren't as aware of the rewards from it because it's still somewhat more distant than it would be for a, a romantic partner where you are literally kind of getting as close to a person as you can be. And so first off, I want to kind of just define this because intimacy and passion and romance and and all of like closeness and all of these kind of things often get thrown into the same kind of uh, basket of catch-all terms for things that kind of suggest relationships and, and sexual or romantic relationships and so I just wanted to kind of create a little bit of a division here because uh, especially between things like passion and the more emotive elements of this and intimacy which tends to be more contemplative and thought out and and a little bit more kind of um, kind of slow and, and plodding as opposed to passion which can be like a rush and you know passion often seems to be the kind of merging of two people's actions towards a goal you know especially when we're talking about um kind of sexual and romantic relationships you know the the passion will tend to lead to something in you know fairly short order um you know two people who are passionate in their relationship about doing a thing will tend to rush towards that whenever they have the opportunity to whether that is sex or whether that is something as as you know a hobby or a place that they that they both gravitate towards in in a very um concerted way you know there's there's that but then intimacy um has a much it is much more towards kind of the appreciation of yourself and another self working together in concert there's not just this surge of the two of you becoming this force it's very much more kind of a, a case of appreciating um, the the value and the importance of the two of you and how like the level of worth involved um, as a result of you and this other person these two individuals coming together um, to, to kind of work together on things and to celebrate that I guess is is the way to to look at it but as a result kind of the you know, intimacy can be incredibly valuable. It's most valuable. It can help kind of deal with negative conditions like things like depression and calming anxiety and getting people to calm down off being aggressive. You know, there's always the 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 kind of stereotypical scene in in various kind of action films or crime films or whatever where you've got the the female partner or the male partner or whoever kind of calming down the other person and getting them away from conflict. And you know that is a genuine effect of of what intimacy can do because you're you're willing to listen and appreciate the other person but there are there are a few things that kind of puts intimacy in context that kind of defines it a bit more and so you know to to generate intimacy to to take part in it there are a, a collection of things that that you know tend to happen or that sh should happen as a as a result of people being that close you know the first one is that accept the kind of acceptance of who you are and who they are yeah and and so 
you know they'll they'll and they'll accept you back the same way and it's it's that acceptance and that appreciation of the other person as said value and importance of the two of you working together you know that that appreciation comes in there and realizing that you are different and separate people but that you can still work together in a concerted way again obviously in other situations outside of romance this can be much much more obvious but also much much more missed simply because you've you know if you're you're very very close to a workmate and that or, or a friend it's usually as a result of shared action where you have come to appreciate that person for who they are because of the situation or because of the individual uh, kind of area that generated the friendship in the first place um, but the second thing is that you tend to hold each other in quite high regard and it tends to be fairly even on this as well so you're not only just are you appreciating who you are and who they are and they're doing the same but also they you're holding each other in quite high regard you know you you are uh, the, the person that they will that they will see as a as a, a kind of standout figure in their life yeah maybe not for any other reason but you make them feel good or, or that they like you for whatever reason, but they will still hold you in that high, slightly higher regard or in that much higher regard, depending on how they perceive the other people around them. Number three is the, that you tend to uh, enhance the welfare of one another. You know, you will actually care for one another. If one of you is hurt or sick, you will tend to look after them. If they are um, kind of, you will watch their back and try and keep a, a good grip on the things that maybe they are less aware of. Again, acknowledging the kind of accepting who you are in, as individuals, you know, the, the enhanced welfare people have their weaknesses and, you know, helping someone avoid those weaknesses is, is part of enhancing their welfare. Um, the fourth one is granting emotional support, especially kind of during difficult or negative experiences. You know, a lot of times offering support to someone who's having a really crap time can be a really really difficult thing to do because you don't know how you can help you feel helpless you feel upset you get dragged down with them uh and stuff like that here though it's a case of you don't it might it might still be uncomfortable but you make a concerted effort to work with that person either by distancing distancing yourself from it so that you can approach it from a different angle to help that person or by um kind of just finding your own kind of um, appreciation for the situation and just through the appreciation of that other person you want to help them through it again enhancing the welfare kind of plays into this as well um the next thing is that you you, you sometimes share things that you like you know be it an interest or, or something that excites you or experiences or whatever else you know again i say occasional you know sometimes because it doesn't have to be all the time because you're already accepting that you're different separate people and working together like on the big things or working together as part of a relationship or or whatever else doesn't mean that you're attached at the hip and so sharing those experiences sharing those occasional things is 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 important you know that's the the v in um or the v and the i in the dvi model that we've talked about before um, you know, it's 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 getting people involved. It's getting people immersed in those moments with you. It's the the variety of different experiences that allow for kind of the continual growth of emotion as building blocks for the relationship. You know, so so again, it doesn't have to be all the time, but it has to be there uh, sometimes. You know, just because otherwise you don't have anything to build with. You don't have anything to generate and so that intimacy kind of drifts because if you if you're counting intimacy instead of maybe like a uh, as with dvei where we were saying it's more of kind of building the relationship from the ground up maybe if if intimacy is more of a bridge you're still going to need the, the building blocks for it to do it and so you know not having those you know you don't need maybe as many shared uh kind of experiences and things and you you have to appreciate that the two separate sides are going to remain separate regardless of if you've built a bridge on them or not but that bridge still needs to be there if you want the the kind of traffic between the two of you to cross it um the next one is being kind of there being reliable um and and obviously i'm not necessarily saying there in person but kind of like being reliable enough for that person to count on you when they need you yeah for um, obviously if, if they're going through a very negative difficult time and 
you've made yourself completely unavailable as much as you might want to give them the support you you aren't there you aren't reliable you cannot be relied on to 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 be there for them when they need you then obviously that means that there's going to be more of a rift more of a drift even from from where you might have been just because they couldn't rely on you and they they in theory are doing the same back you know again we've we've talked before about making sure that things are even and equal between in, in relationships that applies to this as well um but then the the last couple of things tend to be um you need to communicate on on a, a more open level because you know if you're just talking superficially about stuff you know small talk or whatever it is that's in front of you or talking about practical things like you you need to do this or we need to do this and this is how we're going to do it then you know obviously that kind of boils down to to not really adding much substance or much kind of connection uh, in the way that you communicate so you need to communicate more about kind of the things that you want to do and the things that you feel and the things that you're you're looking at and experiencing that aren't purely superficial aren't practical they don't need to be super deep all the time but for instance just offering an opinion on something that maybe you wouldn't have offered an opinion on if it was just small talk or something like that you know it's it's those those kind of steps up in communication in sharing um, the the then also allow for that intimacy to to develop and to be maintained um, and then the last one is that you know obvi obviously everyone's different and you need to acknowledge that yeah we've already talked about people being separate and this being a kind of more celebrate intimacy being more of a celebration of people working in concert as two individuals but also everyone you know everyone's an individual and so making sure that you you can identify that you see the unique worth in the person that you are with and that they in turn have an appreciation for your unique worth um is is the the important thing because again that does kind of play into the kind of holding people up to a higher regard um and so on and so forth but again you know the you can hold someone in a higher regard but that might just be not because they've got a unique value but just because they are the most applicable to a task or the most applicable to a situation that you're in at the time you know this needs to be a more overarching appreciation of that person um but the thing is obviously there are people who'll be like but as I said we've we've done so many of these things we've tried and there are there are always things that just get in the way that don't work not everything that you've said can be implemented so easily as you seem to suggest and i'm like you're right you're completely right there are four big things that get in the way of the kind of generation of intimacy or make it struggle and break down afterwards and it tends to be a kind of very common set of barriers here um and so we'll just go through them the first one tends to be in my view the expectation of failure yeah the kind of you've had painful experiences in the past and so you're now around this new intimate contact that might actually be the best thing that's ever happened to you in this kind of way and yet past experiences you think that person's going to leave you you think this is going to break down you think this is all going to go horribly and so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and it just collapses around you you know you've, you've said it's going to happen and then it ends up happening and as a result that kind of expectation of failure is probably the biggest and most regular thing that i see happen around this and see you know just to see that collapse that crumbling of what could have otherwise been a good thing just because there's not that confidence there there's not that willingness to take the risk and see it becomes very much more a case of well the the past is 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 weighing on that person so much that they just don't think that they're going to be able to to handle it or that it's just you know the other person they start reading into the other person's actions when you know if you're appreciating that you're both individuals and you've got all those other things that we talked about a minute ago you know you're holding them to high regard you've got their uh, a good gauge on their their value to you um then you know the expectation of failure shouldn't be there because you're seeing how powerful and how good the the thing that you you got yourself into is and so the expectation of failure shouldn't be there until like you've got some concrete signs which again in theory that would be 
that would see this happening in reverse where the intimacy is collapsed first and then the failure the expectation of failure has come along as a result of seeing that as opposed to the expectation of failure being there first and then the collapse happening afterwards um, but then further on we've got obviously things like narcissism and being self-obsessed being selfish you know that that tends to be a big thing because obviously if you're regarding yourself on a in a very high regard and you're not really allowing that to the other people around you you're not defining yourself versus the other person um it's just a case of you stand head and shoulders above everyone else you know then that doesn't really allow for you to necessarily see the value of the other person or to um acknowledge kind of a lot of other a lot of other things you know do, be doing all the kind of engaging with their uh, kind of the improvement of their welfare or engaging with um the the reliability kind of angle you know you're not necessarily going to be there if if you're too busy kind of like as with a, a narcissist kind of engaging in staring into a mirror lovingly you know and then stuff like that so that's that's going to be a big issue and and you know narcissism and self-obsession can be it, it is a, it's a killer for relationships it really is um but then the, the the next one tends to be resentment obviously if you're resenting your partner if you're i don't know resentful of the fact that they are able to do things that you're not or if they if if for whatever reason um, it comes down to money or it comes down to previous relationships or it comes down to things that they are able to do, privileges that they've had in the past. I mean, you know, fine, make them aware of the fact that, you know, because obviously people get used to their environments and their environment is what shapes their view of the world. But again, like, it's a case of making that person aware of the differences and not just purely resenting them for it. Yeah, that, that's where that communication comes in from from earlier if you're communicating on that higher level where you're able to talk to that person about whether or not your um like what they've said seems a little disconnected or maybe a little harsh a little insulting to you because you lived through a situation that they're commenting on and they didn't and and it's not the way that that is you know that that's the level of communication it doesn't always have to be a, you know the communication doesn't always have to be about good things it can be about kind of the, the negative stuff as well but that communication still has to be there and if you're resenting like even if only one of you is resenting the other one it's still going to cause that breakdown of intimacy that breakdown of communication because if there's resentment there in the first place it means that you probably weren't communicating before that um and then the last one tends to be um a, a kind of i guess this is where um the boundaries kind of come in where we've talked about these before where it's either um, they want intimacy too much and they become demanding and clingy and they, they try to lose themselves in the other person or they haven't paid attention to it enough and so as a result there's this distance that's growing but they're unaware of it, yeah? And they're not able to manage that in themselves and stuff like that and it, it becomes like there are... There are um, people who unfortunately kind of deal with this and, and have this as a, as a natural thing as a result of various conditions. But at the same time, there are an awful lot of people who are just vacant and blind to this stuff. Um, but again, this is where the communication angle, the seeing the worth in people, you know, it's, it's realized that when I said holding people in a higher esteem, you know, it's it will with a higher regard that doesn't necessarily mean putting them up on a pedestal to the extent that you are so far below them yeah and so that's what that's what i've seen happen here uh, a few times it's where someone has put someone else so, so high on a pedestal and they want to kind of bring themselves up to that level to feel so high up uh, where they where they could easily elevate themselves but they don't they don't you know they they don't have those boundaries they don't reset their limitations or anything like that and they don't consider their limitations. They just go, I've put you up there and I want to be up there. So I'm always going to cling. I'm always going to hold on as, bu as much as I can. I'm always going to do all these things. And there are lots of people that are guilty of this in minor ways as well as a reaction to something negative or a reaction to, to changes or whatever else. But it's when someone is doing it continuously and those boundaries just don't form. And they're always ignored 
um, even if they do form, you know, that's that's when you get this. And that's, you know, obviously that if you've got that over clinginess where someone doesn't have that boundary and they're kind of trying to get overly intimate all the time, then obviously that breaks down intimacy because it's it's not acknowledging the the differentiation between one person and the other person and the concerted movement together over time. It's very much more an attempt to make intimacy into passion for gratification and nothing else. And that's again where we run into a stumbling block because that's trying to change things um, outside of what they're really able to change into like in the moment. You know, intimacy tends to be more long run. Passion tends to be very uh, kind of spontaneous and instantaneous. And so having that kind of shift can be not just jarring, but kind of break things and, and cause the, the collapse of, of any intimacy or any relationship that is built up around that already. Um, but anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think, because, because, you know, I've talked about a lot here. I've talked about two different areas, both the positive and the negative and, and how it all works. So, you know, I'm hoping that maybe having this spelt out, like, gives people a little bit more confidence. Because if you know, one of the biggest fears that people seem to have, and that I know people have, is the fear of the unknown. And so that's why I try to spell some stuff out. Because if it's, if it's spelt out and you can see what it is, then hopefully it's not unknown anymore. And so as a result, it's easier for you to approach it. It's easier for you to tangle with it. Yeah. I mean, I've always been kind of drawn towards the unknown to find out what it is, but I know a lot of people aren't and it's easier for them to just kind of remove themselves from it. But, you know, you're not going to get past those obstacles unless you know where they are and what they can do and, and identify like the, the ups and downs of them. In which case, that's what I want to do with this. But tell me, you know, these these things how many things have you seen of the in regards to this in your your previous relationships how many things have you seen in your current relationships you know are there things here that maybe you you um need some clarification on or something that i've not been clear on um but otherwise if you found this at all interesting guys then please drop me a like and subscribe for more and i'll see you in the video tomorrow take care